here we have another Christmas hat. <laughs> it's not really a Christmas hat. You might be wondering why I'm wearing a cowboy's hat. Well, have you been watching this term, the new series of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here? I haven't watched it, but I have to admit, I thought when I heard that they'd filmed the episodes in Wales this year rather than Australia, I felt really sorry for the celebrities. Can you imagine how they must have felt when they heard that they weren't going to Australia, that they were staying in Wales? Have you ever said uh, in a moment of crisis, I'm a Christian, get me out of here? I'm going to let you into a secret. And so you can take me more seriously, I'm going to take my hat off. During the first lockdown, back in March, uh, we were put into the shielding category. And I, I want, I'm going to admit to you that I secretly really enjoyed being in the shielding group. And, uh, you know, we were like told that we had to stay at home. We weren't allowed to go out and about and go, go to the office to work. I know for some that would have been really hard, but for me, it was really, I actually secretly enjoyed it. There have been many moments though this year where I've cried out, I'm a vicar, get me out of here. As I found God's calling um, to me uh, super challenging. God calling me to lead the church into mission by example. That meant leaving the safety of my home, engaging with people, uh, many people I didn't know. And as an introvert, that is incredibly challenging. Do you ever think if I wasn't a Christian, I would just play video games all day or buy more clothes or date a non-Christian or whatever it might be for you? For me, it usually goes like this. This is my thought process when I'm having one of those days where I'm crying out, if uh, I'm a Christian, get me out of here. If I wasn't a Christian, I would move out to the countryside, maybe even an island, a remote island somewhere, spending lots of time on a boat fishing alone, uh, maybe with my family, <laughs> if they're being nice and well behaved, uh, and engaging with as few people as possible. That's an introvert's dream. <laughs> but it comes into tension and conflict with our Christian life, doesn't it? sometimes our dreams and our idea of a good life. For some, being restricted this Christmas uh, is a huge disappointment, not being able to see all of the people you would normally want to see. But for others, you're secretly glad that you don't have to see all those distant relatives. You know, we're all different. We're all wired differently. But let's face it, being a Christian stretches us all in different ways at different times. You know, being a Christian is both comforting because we know God's love through Jesus, but it's also really challenging following him. Christmas, I think, is a time when we can think about God's comfort and his challenge because the central biblical themes of covenant and kingdom, sonship and rule, right relationship and royal responsibility come together in the birth of Jesus Christ. So here we have uh, the picture of Father Lion and Lion Cub. You know, this is uh, a well-known picture taken from uh, the film The Lion King. And in, in the film The Lion King, uh, we, we get those two themes of sonship and kingdom rule. In Luke chapter 1 verse 31 to 33 we heard read, you will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. These themes of sonship and kingdom rule. So let's begin by looking at Jesus as the son of the most high. And I've mentioned it already, so we're going to watch some of the Lion King. The son of the most high. I love that bit in Lion King. And if you've not seen that version of the film, I thoroughly recommend it. Um, but, you know, 
uh, Jesus, the, the story of Jesus uh, is even better. And just like we saw many, all the animals gathering, coming to worship, coming to uh, honor the newborn king, uh, Jesus drew visitors from all around the world too, important as well as the unimportant people. Now, who were the important visitors? Uh, hopefully you are thinking of the three wise men, those uh, learned men, sometimes called kings, but weren't really kings, but they were important, uh, well-respected visitors traveling from afar, as well as visitors who would not have been seen as important uh, in the world's eyes at the time. And we have shepherds, uh, one of the one of the most basic jobs, a little bit, um, uh, I'm not going to make parallels or comparisons today, um, but, but, but not, a, uh, not as respected as the wise men, and yet just as welcome uh, to come and visit Jesus. Now, I wonder, does anyone still have a granddad or grandpa still alive? Maybe some of you even have a great granddad or great grandpa still alive. Anyone's, anyone got a great grandparent alive? How about a great, great grandpa or great, great granddad? Now, Jesus was the son of God, but also an heir to the throne of King David. Jesus was David's great, 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 great in fact, times 25 grandson. He was the 25th great grandson of King David. And he was a much grander son than any of the previous children that had gone before him. One of David's first sons, uh, King David in the Bible, in the Old Testament, one of his first sons was called Solomon. And like Jesus, uh, Solomon was visited by lots of people from around the world too but most of those visitors were very important and, and in the end Solomon wasn't a very good king and he wasn't a very good son and he made bad choices he wasn't faithful to his first wife but ended up having lots and lots of wives he also wasn't faithful to God either. Some of his wives followed other gods. And so Solomon started to follow other gods too. He was a bad son. Thankfully, Jesus uh, was a better son. He didn't have any wives at all. And he only followed God, his father. Now, I'm not saying it's, it's uh, bad to have a wife, but Jesus was the most faithful he was the most faithful to God because God was his only, only uh, source of uh, security, his only source of comfort and uh, the, the, the primary relationship in his life. He was a faithful son, even to the extent of dying on the cross for an unfaithful people. It's by Jesus's faithfulness that we are saved and that we can know the father's love and affirmation uh, the the kind of the good thoughts of who we are the, the good thoughts of god for us of who we are in jesus it's because of jesus's faithfulness we were unfaithful but jesus was faithful for us so that when god looks at us he sees jesus's righteousness he sees jesus's good choices because of Jesus being the faithful son, we are no longer orphans and Jesus, uh, in Jesus, we are sons and daughters of the living God. Now that should fill you with comfort. There is comfort in Jesus being the better son of God for us. So he was the true and better son, but he was also the true and better king. And here's where the challenge comes in, the challenge of being a Christian. We've just heard about the comfort of being a Christian because Jesus is the better son. But we know that there's challenge in being a Christian. And the challenge comes in Jesus being the true and better king. And we're going to look back to the Lion King for some help here. So Jesus is not only the better son, but he's also the better king. And uh, here we see 
uh, Mufasa explaining to his son what it means to be a king. You know, Simba is is thinking, being a king, you can do whatever you want. And Mufasa is saying, a good king uh, thinks about what he can give, not what he can take. A true king searches for what he can give. We've heard about what presents you've received today, uh, but I wonder what was the best present you gave this Christmas? What was the best present that you gave this Christmas? Thinking back to Solomon, who was David's first son, Solomon ended up not being a very good king either, as well as being a bad son. Some of the gods uh, he began following uh, demanded that he should do bad things to his people. Now, Solomon was meant to worship and follow God, uh, who's the only God, Yahweh. Um, but he started following these other gods, these other idols, and the, the beliefs they had uh, meant that, that Solomon had to start doing bad things to his people. Now, Adults, if you want to read a little bit more about that, you can read in 1 Kings chapter 11 and maybe uh, a commentary about what the worship of Molech involved. Molech was one of the these gods that uh, Solomon was uh, tempted to begin to worship. Solomon took from his people for his own gain. Jesus, the true and better king, uh, sought to sacrifice and he gave himself up for the people. It says in Philippians 2, chapter 6, Jesus existed in the form of God, yet he gave no thought to seizing equality with God as his supreme prize. Instead, he emptied himself of his outward glory by reducing himself to the form of a lowly servant. He became human. He became human. So he's the son and the future king who is visited by people from all around the world, but he chooses to begin in the dirt. God kneels down into Bethlehem, into a manger. Now, recently, we were privileged to see a future king and queen come and visit Twerton. Now, anyone want to have a guess who that was? Maybe you were even there. Maybe you even got to see it. Here's a picture that uh, Catherine and I took uh, on the day that uh, William and Kate, Prince William and Princess Kate came to visit Twerton. And uh, yes, they were this close. Uh, we got to, to get close. And, and, and one of the most amazing things to watch was uh, Prince William kneeling down and playing in the dirt uh, by picking up a worm in order to bless these children. It's like he uh, modelled uh, what we read here in, in Philippians, reducing himself to the form of a lowly servant, becoming human, getting onto our level. Now, uh, I'm not saying that uh, what Prince William did is anywhere near a comparison of what Jesus did when he came to earth as a human. Not only is the comparison between the heavenly glory and the glory of the palace that they live in is incomparable, but also the sacrifice and the, the humility that, that God displayed by becoming human that is incomparable to just a picture of Prince William kneeling with a worm in his hand. And yet uh, there's something of uh, and there's a sign there's a there's a glimpse there isn't there now because we are sons and daughters of God with Jesus uh, then we are also called to reign with Jesus so we're both called to be sons of, and daughters of God but also we're called and invited to reign uh, as in royalty with Jesus and we see this uh, in a couple of passages in the Bible, uh, just some examples. 2 Timothy 2, if we died with him, uh, we will also live with him. Verse 12, if we endure, we will also reign with him. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 says this, 
but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who calls you out of darkness into his wondrous light. So whatever way you are wired, uh, being a Christian is both a comfort and a challenge. We are called to not only know God's comfort, which can be challenging in and itself, because it means that we have to let go of the comforts that we find in other places. But we're also called to the, the responsibility of ruling and reigning with Jesus. That is a challenge. That is a challenge to follow Jesus. And that might look different for each of us, uh, but it's always going to be a challenge. I can guarantee it. And uh, for introverts, we might find our comfort not in hiding away from the world, but in hiding ourselves in God and knowing whose we are in Christ. We experience the challenge of royal responsibility, remembering we are called to reign in God's kingdom as much in prayer uh, as in actively sharing the good news with others. For extroverts, you might find your comfort not in the public affirmation of others around you, but in God alone. Popularity with him may lead to unpopularity with others. We experience the challenge of royal responsibility by remembering that, that you are called first to abide in God before action, before doing uh, for him being before doing is often a challenge for extroverts to engage with those who may not be in a place to have fun who may not be good fun to hang out with loving them without expecting anything in return can be extremely challenging for those of those of you who feed off the energy of other people in the room our missional communities at St. Michael's, uh, I believe, are great places to share the comfort and challenge of enjoying Jesus and following Jesus. I want to finish by praying uh, and praying for you as you uh, as you embrace the comfort and challenge of Jesus Christ, the son, the true and better son and the true and better king. So thank you, Father, that you have raised us up with Christ. Thank you that we are seated uh, with him in the heavenly realms. Thank you that you have made us priests of God and of Christ. Thank you that you have given us the task of bringing the good news to the nations. And may we make the most of every opportunity you give us. Even within the limitations and the restrictions, we thank you that you have still called us to comfort and challenge uh, within your kingdom as sons and rulers in the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, we pray that you'd strengthen us by your spirit. Amen.